Lights of the gastrointestinal set. Tonight's episode, Heartburn, with your congenial host, Dr. Owen Keeley. One of the commonest digestive afflictions is heartburn. We all get it at some time or another. Luckily, it has nothing to do with your heart, but it occurs right here at the lower end of the esophagus, where a muscle or sphincter separates the esophagus from the stomach. This prevents acid content from the stomach going back into the esophagus and causing burning and irritation. This occurs because the esophagus lacks the mucus protection that the stomach has to protect itself from acid. When this sphincter becomes weakened by things like alcohol, tobacco, chocolate, or coffee, or certain medications such as Valium or birth control pills, this symptom can occur. How do you put out the fire? Avoid those things I've just told you. Try liquid antacids like Maalox or Diabol. And if that doesn't work, consult your local fire to... What? I mean your doctor. <laughs> Tonight's episode, Duodenal Ulcer, with your congenial host, Dr. Owen Keeley. Today, we are going to discuss the stomach and ulcers. The stomach is the J-shaped organ that sits right here. The purpose of the stomach is to liquefy the food by muscular action and production of hydrochloric acid. The stomach doesn't liquefy itself because it also has this protective coating made up of mucus and bicarbonate. <laughs> a fine balance is necessary between the amount of acid produced and the amount of mucus available for protection. If this goes out of whack, a small hole can be burnt in the wall of the duodenum. This is called an ulcer. Acid is produced in excess by things like stress, tobacco, and alcohol. The mucus lining is weakened by medications such as aspirin, and more recently, a spiral bacteria has been found in the mucus of ulcer sufferers. This is called Helicobacter pylori. It is felt that it manufactures ammonia and hence weakens the mucus lining. How do we protect ourselves from ulcer disease? First of all, no tobacco, no more than two drinks per day, and never on an empty stomach. Avoid medications such as aspirin, and most importantly, learn to relax. <coughs> Of the gum to the bum, common ailments of the gastrointestinal set. Tonight's episode, Master Colin, with your congenial host, Dr. Owen Keeley. You know, one of the commonest digestive problems seen by a family doctor is irritable or spastic colon. The colon is also known as the large bowel. The colon starts here, goes up, across here, and then down to there. By the time the digestive food is passed through the small bowel, all we have left is a mishmash of liquid waste. It enters the large bowel and is propelled forward by a series of gentle contractions called peristalsis. Liquid is removed, and ideally by the time it reaches our rectum, all we have left is a well-formed stool. Irritable colon is caused by the three overs, overtired, overworked, or overworried. This tension disrupts the normal gentle peristalsis, and the liquid waste is propelled through the large bowel, either too quickly and we get diarrhea, or less commonly too slowly and we get constipation. The muscles in the colonic wall may go into spasm, causing cramps. You may have to go to the bathroom a lot, but it doesn't mean that you're susceptible to a more serious condition, such as cancer or colitis. To help with this condition, remember that the symptoms are real, but they're not serious. Try adding some bulk to your diet slowly to help firm up your stool. Some doctors would prescribe a mild antispasmodic, and I agree with this. And remember, relax. A change of lifestyle will probably help. Of the gum to the bum, common ailments 
of the gastrointestinal set. Tonight's episode, Gallstones, with your congenial host, Dr. Owen Keeley. Gallbladder is a funny little organ about the size of your thumb. It hangs below the liver, connected by the bile ducts, right about here. <coughs> its primary purpose is to store extra bile, which is produced by the liver and is used in the digestion of fat. This extra bile really isn't needed. Amongst other things, bile contains cholesterol and bile acids. If not enough bile acids are present, gallstones can be formed. Most gallstones are harmless. They merely bounce around inside the gallbladder. However, sometimes they become lodged in the cystic duct, which leads from the gallbladder to the bile duct. When the cystic duct is blocked, pressure builds up. This pressure causes severe pain known as biliary colic. It feels as if you've been kicked under the right ribs. Sometimes the stone will drop back into the gallbladder and all is well again. But if it doesn't, and if it reoccurs, and the stone stays blocked, infection will occur. Surgical treatment is the only choice here. Episode Appendicitis with your congenial host, Dr. Owen Keeley. The vermiform appendix is well named because it's a worm like appendage about five centimeters long at the beginning of the large bowel. After birth, it's a completely useless organ. One of my professors used to say it was God's gift to the surgeons because the appendix can become infected uh -oh. and the only treatment is surgical removal. There are about 150 appendectomies done yearly in an average community hospital. The pain of appendicitis usually begins here around the navel where it's dull. Later, it moves to the right side of the abdomen where it becomes dull and boring. Then, if we move our right leg or if we cough or sneeze, the pain becomes much worse. If infected, the appendix can fill with pus and may rupture. Oh, butterscotch. This is very dangerous because peritonitis can follow. Peritonitis is a generalized abdominal infection that if left untreated, can lead to death. If you suspect appendicitis, call your doctor right away. 